John Lacey, Munster Rugby. Um, as we were aware, uh, rugby is a kind of a, a constantly changing, constantly evolving game. Um, and there's uh, some new developments with regards to the laws for the upcoming season. That's correct, yeah. There's uh, 11 new law trials, as they're called. Uh, World Rugby are constantly trying to make the game a better spectacle, make it more, I suppose, attractive to people to watch and get more ball and play time. So basically, these are law trials which means they're not adopted fully into law yet. So they will experiment for the season and then they will gather all the relevant information around these particular 11 changes and they'll decide then if they're good for the game and put them into law permanently. So in the no Northern Hemisphere, um, our season is obviously different in the Southern Hemisphere. So we start in August 1 and uh, the Southern Hemisphere, they start in January 1. So people are watching the Rugby Championship currently at the moment. They'll be on the old laws. And as we start into the new Pro, Pro 14 season uh, and Autumn Internationals, they'll be under the new laws. So people just to be aware that there is two sets, which is probably very difficult for the referees that are doing cross-hemisphere competitions. But it's only until the Rugby Championship is over and then it'll all be blended into one by January. And what are the most, I suppose, they're all important, but what are the biggest um, changes that people will notice when, when watching the game? Um, well, I suppose there's four around the scrum for a start, so um, and the breakdown is a big one. I suppose the two of them are really the most important that people will be watching in terms of what it'll do. So basically, the four in scrum is that the scrum half now has to put the ball into the scrum and it has to be hooked. So big change for the scrum half and the referee is that last season the scrum half had to wait for the, the number nine for the referee to call him to put it in. Now he doesn't have to do that anymore. The front row has to hook and I know lots of people will have opinions on you know the hooking and non-hooking and put it in straight. It's basically have to be hook. Any person in the front row can hook. Um, and the fourth one then is the number eight can pick the ball out of the second row, which currently he couldn't before. He still can't pick it out of the front row, but that shouldn't be a problem because they have to hook the ball, so it should at least get to the second rows. So they're the four around the scrum. Okay, so there's a, there's a change in definition around possession. So basically, if I'm trying to catch a ball and I'm juggling it, um, that's now deemed that I'm in possession of that ball. So basically, if I'm standing in the field of play, and the ball is over the touchline and I'm juggling it and then I drop it, I've deemed to brought that ball into touch. So that's that's a big change. Last year that would have been my line out. This year it'll be the opposition's. So it could be a big uh, a big territory shift in terms of who puts it in and great implications whether you're, t you're attacking or defending, obviously. And the other type of... Uh, possession that one if, if I get a pass from you for instance and I'm juggling the ball I'm, I'm I'm available to be tackled now so once I'm juggling a ball I'm deemed to be in possession so the defense can tackle me while I'm trying to catch it and from obviously the scrum um, and the rook are the two facets of the game that tend to slow it down the most what uh, what new rules in regards to the rook are, are going to be implemented? okay so we've we've two huge ones um, I've left three games already. There's been not a lot of change, but the, 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 the importance on the guy rolling away now, if a ruck is, is, is not formed, a guy used to be able to play from the other side, which people will be familiar with England versus Italy in the Six Nations, where Italy employed a tactic where they, they didn't engage, so the guy could play from the other side. The new law has tidied that up so any guy that makes a tackle now must go around to the back feet of his own defender before he can attempt to play the ball so in, in effect nobody can play the ball from the other side which the Italians won't be able to adopt that tactic anymore which is I agree with it because it's not good for the game to see that type of stuff so that's 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 the big one um, what I've noticed so far is that in the three games that I've ref pre-season is that guys are rolling away quicker um, because they have to and I think that can only be good for the game because we get quicker ball when we say quick ball it's three seconds or less away from the breakdown now it can be slower if a guy rolls away and the ball is available maybe a nine will decide just to slow it down that's that's his decision but what we're trying to do is make sure that there's quick ball available to be played because the quicker the ball the tougher it is for defence 
and we see a better a better brand of rugby. So that's that's one side of the the tackle area which is tidied up. And the second part is if there's a tackle complete, the first arriving player from the attacking team goes over that ball. There's an immediate offside off side line in place. So for instance. You tackle me, I fall to the ground, and one of the players comes and steps over the ball on top of me. There's an immediate rock line there and an offside line there. So, again, that's in, in ensuring that if there's a, a guy quickly in support, there's an offside line which creates the space for players to, to play. So those those two things, and I know from reffing a few matches and obviously doing a bit of training here with the Munster squad is that they're very disciplined in those two areas, particularly Munster and Ref Leinster at the weekend, and a Ref Saracens in a pre-season friendly. They're all, they're all very much adopting this quick roll away. There's still competition for the ball, which is still very important. So, um, it should it should be interesting to see how it transpires for the season. And you've gone from refereeing the pre-season games in the Northern Hemisphere to heading down south, uh, where I believe you'll be refereeing Australia in the Rugby Championship. That's right. Uh, uh, not an easy proposition to have to kind of reprogram yourself to the old rules and, go, and and work between the two. No, no, but I mean, look, it's it's just part and parcel of what you have to be professional and prepare for any match. So I just literally have to remember what I was doing last season and do that and not bring the couple of new ones in. Um, I'll be writing them down as I travel down just to make sure that I don't, but uh, there's a team of us there. But hopefully it'll be a free-flowing game and... I think around the breakdown anyway, if you're hot and people rolling away, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a major major problem. And uh, I think like what you said there, if you're hot and people not rolling away, that's an important part of it too. That if if the players themselves know, listen, we can't afford to be lazy, we can't afford to be hanging on that extra second and rolling back in on top of the rook, then it polices itself in a way. Exactly, yeah. But as I said, what I've seen, but from the professional teams I've had already, Bat, Leinster, Saracens, Munster, Connacht, they're all they're all providing that quick ball because they all want to get organised in defence pretty quickly. So, it's 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 a, it's a silly lazy penalty to give away. Um, there's a couple of other ones coming in as well, which may be interesting. Um, obviously, if there's a, if it's a professional game of rugby and. It goes to 40 or 80 minutes. Last year, if you kick the ball dead, it's it's immediately over. D- this season, if it's gone to 40, it's gone into the red as people look on TV, you must tap it to yourself and then kick it out. If you kick it directly to touch, the line-out has to happen. Okay, So I think that's good from an attack perspective. It gives the non-offending team uh, an opportunity to take the line-out. Last year, he didn't because the clock was gone to red. Now that's... That's sorted out as well. So that, that should be interesting. So if you want to make it dead, you can tap it yourself and kick it directly to touch. Or if you like, you can face your own goal line and kick it directly dead over the dead ball line. And that will finish the, finish the game either for half time or for full time. But um, I think it happened at the weekend. Um, it did in the rugby championship where at the end of the game, he had to tap it to himself and then kick it directly out. So that's one. Uh, another one is uh, if there's a penalty try now, um, there's no kick a goal. There's an immediate seven points for the the, the, the non-offending team, so um, that's interesting. And obviously, if it's a penalty try, it's a deliberate action. Um, that player must go to the bin. Uh, probably one exception if if a scrum just gets completely demolished, and no individual clearly has brought it down. But if a guy pulls a mall down or there's a deliberate knock forward, it'll be seven points and a yellow card. So it's a bit of a, obviously a disincentive that you lose a player and it's an immediate seven points. The only people that are upset with that are the goal kickers for their stats because they lose two points on their trying to reach different milestones. So they're not too happy about that, but that's, that's the new law. And is there, if I, is there a new law around uh, uncontested scrums and the amount of players you have to have in the scrum? Yeah, again, if you go uncontested scrums, which is pretty uncommon in professional rugby because they they know they lose a man, so they have a lot of strong guys that can go in and, in there. But if it does happen, uh, the scrum must remain 8v8. So basically, if you go uncontested scrums, you're down a man, you have to put eight in the scrum, which leaves you an extra man short in the backs. So basically, it's a deterrent to go uncontested. And if it has to happen, there is lots of space for the 
the the team that has cont- that didn't want to go uncontested, so they have more space in the back line to attack. So it's it's a lot harder to defend if you decide to go uncontested scrums. Another one around the rock area is um, basically if 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 you're involved in a, in a rock and you're counter rocking. Last season you were allowed to use your feet. You can kick the ball out of that rock. Um, this season you cannot do that now, and it's really got to do with player safety because you can just fly hack on the ground without looking properly you make contact with a guy's head so we we don't want to see that happening in the game um so basically you can counter up the only way you can use your feet now is in a, a backwards hooking motion backwards and as i said that's completely around around safety another big change too is around around the touch and when the ball's in touch and when it's not now I, there'll be some video examples that will show you but basically what world rugby have done is that they've kind of extended the field of play so you have your touch lines and then you have whether the ball is basically over the plane of touch or inside so the video clips will explain more but basically what they've done if they've, they've in in a nutshell is that they've extended the field of play so guys can jump in the air outside catch balls and flick them back in so a bit like rugby league they've just made the scope for guys outside of the field of play to catch and throw balls back in a very acrobatic type of way so it'll be very interesting to see um, this season. There could be some spectacular tries, whereas last year they would have been in touch because they've landed outside of the field of play. So they've jumped from the field of play, caught a ball that's outside it, and then landed in touch. Last year that would have been touch. This year, if they've jumped from the field of play, caught a ball outside, and threw it back and landed in touch, it's play on. And that extends to the try line, the, the dead ball line, and the touch lines. So basically, I, I'm pretty interested to see this year what type of acrobats we have out there. And just some fantastic professional athletes there. You know, a guy like Israel Falau with Australia comes to mind. Six foot five, can jump like six, seven meters. No problem in full flight out of the field of play. He could catch a ball with one hand and throw it back. And as I said... We'll wait and see, but I can see if you keep an eye out for some spectacular ones this year. Um, there's another change too around advantage. Um, so I'll give you an example. There's a penalty infringement on the, on the 15. So for example, a guy not rolling away or a guy offside. So referee plays advantage. A um, couple of phases later, there's another guy offside or another guy not rolling away in front of the posts. Second advantage. Um, so basically there's two two penalties given away by the defending team and the team knock it on so referee goes to captain and said you have a penalty here in the 15 or you have a penalty here in front of the posts he gets to choose okay so basically that's a, an added um, incentive for a team to keep playing because they they've got, may, may have multiple advantages so they may decide to kick to the corner because they need seven points or maybe chasing the game or three points in front of the sticks might they might be happy with that so again it's all about giving the non-offending team the option to what's most advantageous to them really so i think that's another positive i, I always found that a bit of a bugbear because if, if if you had a team that give away a penalty in the five meter channel and a couple of phases later they were in front of the posts there's no disincentive for them not to put their hands in again and say look it's plain advantage let's kill this and take the penalty back out in the five it was yeah you're right you're right but i mean there very much is a directive from world rugby that if 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 a team continues to infringe in the attacking zone in one phase so it's penalty 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 you can still put a guy in the bin Mm. it doesn't have to be you're on a warning no if you've given away three penalties in a row you can automatically go to the bin but again that's that's up to the referee's discretion on the day as opposed to being a, being a, being a fact.